Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Let me call this reg House Regulated Industries meeting to order uh, while we're looking at the substitute in front of you. We have a special guest, Jody. Would you like to come up and introduce yourself? Uh, some of the members of the Regulated Industry understand since we have uh, we've been uh, given several bills uh, that will be looked at during the interim uh, on gaming, lottery oversight, and such. We have a special guest who's flown in today from uh, MGM Entertainment. I just want to give her a chance to say hello to the committee because some of y'all might have an opportunity to meet with her a little bit more during the interim this year. Jody? And thank you for the opportunity to introduce myself. My name is Jody Collins, and I am with MGM Resorts International. I'm a member of their team that identifies new opportunities. And I have been in some capacity in Georgia for about the last five years. And part of that reason and that commitment is because there is a significant opportunity here for companies like us. However, there's also a significant opportunity for Georgia, for the state of Georgia, for the small businesses, for the potential employees. So as you and your peers explore the issue, please feel free to consider us a resource. We're here, we can provide any sort of education or materials, and I hopefully look forward to seeing you all soon. Thank you. Thank you, Jody. And thank you so much for being courteous to, to hang around. All right. Senator Ginn, are you ready, or do you want uh, Chairman uh, Harold to steer through this so we can get done quicker, so we can all go? Great idea, Mr. Chairman. And the, uh, but I appreciate y'all hanging out late. I'm, I'm going to call on the Ways and Means Chairman to, to run through this piece, fine piece of legislation. Thank you, Senator. Uh, ladies and gentlemen of the Regulated Industry Committee, this is the uh, House substitute to Senator Ginn's bill, Senate Bill 146. And you've got it before you, LC 364042S. Uh, in section one, well, that begins on the bottom of page one and continues throughout page two, <coughs> what we've done is we have repealed a referendum requirement uh, for a uh, prior year's Sunday brunch bill. Um, since that bill passed and there was a referendum requirement added to it, we've had uh, 50 plus local jurisdictions uh, hold referendums. Uh, on this issue with unanimous passage. Not a single one is, has failed. Uh, most recently, I think uh, Chairman Rick Williams' uh, community mentioned maybe spent $20,000 to hold a referendum and 250 people uh, came and voted in support. So uh, clearly the, uh, the wisdom of the Senate was good. We were making an expansion of our, our liberalizing our alcohol laws uh, to make sure we hadn't gone too far to put the referendum in. Uh, it's proven that the local communities are um, uh, place in it or understand the will of their citizens uh, and it's passed unanimously in those communities so we think it's prudent now a year plus later uh, to remove that requirement so what will be left is that your local county commission board or your local city council um, in those areas where um, alcohol uh, is available will have via local ordinance the ability to modify the hours of, of sale you see that on page three um, beginning on line 68 and going down to lines 83. Um, this will also allow the local governing bodies uh, to authorize uh, the sale at uh, Kroger and Publix uh, via the local uh, governing body's decision um, for sales there. We haven't expanded the hours any, any further. Uh, than what was previously in the in the bill but again i think over the past year we've demonstrated that at least with this issue our local governments are pretty much in tune with what their communities um, uh, uh, desire that's section one section two is chairman ron stevens bill dealing with distance requirements uh, to uh, affect an issue down in savannah um, on line uh, 92 you'll see um, distilled spirits within 200 yards of a college campus. This is tailored so narrowly as how they de define that college campus on line 93 that you can all see that it applies to one uh, particular college in our state. Uh, that happened to be Savannah College of Art and Design. And then on the, on the next page, uh, on page four, on line 112, uh, the distance from those selling wine and malt beverages, wine and beer, 
is 100 yards. Those two distances, 100 and 200, consistent with statute and other locations. Again, on lines 113 and 114, you'll see the description of the university described, again, affects SCAD and SCAD only to address an issue Chairman Stevens has in Savannah. That is, is his bill uh, there. You'll note also at the top of page four, beginning on line 101 and going through uh, lines 110, um, le uh, um, language has been struck. Uh, this was language that was added a few years ago to affect the location of a grocery store in Athens, uh, which actually never uh, was constructed and never came uh, to fruition, uh, and uh, the will of the Senate was to remove that language, uh, and we will um, have some, if, if that impacts anyone else negatively that may have uh, met that criteria uh, since the legislation was passed, then we'll uh, have to address that in the future. We're not aware of any, uh, but that's not to say that uh, there could be some location uh, out there. On Section 3, this simply has an exception um, for Code Section 15. Code Section 15, this is line um, 130. Um, the statute currently reads that you can't have an open package in a, in a liquor store. So you can't open a can, you can't open a bottle, you can't pour anything inside of a, a liquor store. So we're going to get in just a moment to a new chapter, Chapter 15. But on line 130 that says, except for Chapter 15, you will maintain um, no broken packages there and on the top of um, page five uh, also that exception provide or um, allows a sales representative of a manufacturer or wholesaler to provide a sample uh, to the buyer or the owner uh, and you'll see on lines 141 uh, through 146 that that sample was uh, provided uh, you know, in their in their office, in their buying office, in a in a closed an area closed to the public. Uh, once that sample was provided, that wholesaler or the manufacturer, whoever provided that sample to the buyer or the sales rep, will remove the sample uh, from the premises and and not allow it to uh, remain. That's on the on line 144, uh, and that is in section three. Uh, moving down into section four, again on lines 156 and 160. Those are just the exceptions, you know, except for provided in Chapter 15, which I'm about to speak about. Um, there will be no open packages uh, in a retail package uh, liquor store. And now we move into Section 5, which deals with the tastings. And again, this is Senator Ginn's um, primary uh, measure here. And that begins at the top of page 6. A new Chapter 15 is added. Uh, in the first portion, you'll see there the definitions of licensed premise. Uh, the operator, the sample, and the tasting event. Um, and then as you come down to line 181, you are permitted 24 tasting events per year. Down on 183, that event must take place on the licensed premise and only at times that alcohol is lawfully sold. Line 185, no more than one tasting event per year. Line 186, that event can last no more than four hours for a single tasting event. Line 187, only one type of alcohol uh, may be served at a tasting event. So they'll choose either beer, wine, or spirits for that particular uh, tasting event. Um, and then beginning on lines 191 through 195, it limits the amount that can be provided free of charge to a consumer in any one day. That would be eight ounces of beer, five ounces of wine, and one and one half ounces of spirits. Um, Again, on line 197 and 198, that product provided at a tasting event, provided as a sample, provided for free to the consumer, must come from that retail package store's inventory. So they must have purchased it through uh, the system, the re regulatory environment that we have in Georgia, have it in their inventory, in the store, and whatever product they provide for the tasting must come uh, from that inventory. On the top of page 7, uh, there's some provisions, uh, and now I'm getting hard to read. These lines are getting cut off. But in uh, paragraph 6 up there, uh, dealing with food that could be provided uh, at no cost to the consumer, um, on coming down to paragraph 8, which looks like maybe line 204. Mine's cut, is that right? 
mine's cut off a little bit, line 204. The licensee, that is the, the uh, retail package store that's providing the tasting, will notify the department. That's the Department of Revenue uh, when they're going to have these tasting uh, events. Um, and again, uh, on lines 206 to 209, it details how they uh, account for any uh, broken packages remaining uh, at the end. And if you come down uh, 216 through 218, it allows our Commissioner of Revenue promulgate rules and regs to effectuate the tasting events. And then finally, uh, 219 to 223, it provides that the Commissioner will have the ability uh, to impact the or put limitations on that licensee's uh, alcohol license should there be violations of the provisions when providing uh, the tasting events. That is the measure. It, the only changes, uh, I think, uh, from the subcommittee uh, to this version uh, were uh, with regard to um, 24, tasting. 24 tastings from 12 and the elimination of the retail uh, package store from the hours. Otherwise, the remainder of the bill is, um, as you, those of you that were on the subcommittee uh, heard at that time. Questions? Any questions from the committee? Everybody understand this? Number one, who would that be? Mr. Collins, is that you? Yes, sir. I want to make sure I understand this correctly. So uh, in my community, we have these uh, little wine shops. And people can go in and taste wine. So this is just going to put uh, our package stores, liquor stores, if you will, on kind of the same level playing field. If they want to offer a tasting of Jack Daniels or Johnny Walker, they, they can do that. Is that correct? Is that yes, what I'm understanding? Yes, okay. sir. This puts, puts your package stores in parity with what happens in a grocery store or sure. a vineyard or okay. winery, said whatever. Well, one other thing I wanted to ask was, uh, if you don't mind, Mr. Chairman. Go right ahead. Okay. Uh, when we're talking about providing anything of value to a consumer, so if 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 someone there from the, the the beverage company wanted to give away a a pocket knife or a t-shirt, they're prohibited from doing that. That is correct. So then, and what we're trying to do is make sure we don't have any uh, disparity in the three-tier system. We want to make sure that that uh, uh, you know they they could they could answer questions, maybe knowledge or something like that. If you had a question about their product, but but that's the only thing they can do is provide information. No no market. Uh, driven items, no gifts, no, no nothing of any value. Got a question? Okay. Ask it. Right. And I would just add further to your example, Representative Collins. We also want to discourage stabbings in liquor stores. So. <laughs> 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 Mr. Hawkins. <laughs> Mr. Hawkins, is that you? Oh, yes, right yeah. uh, Representative Harold and I talked about an amendment on the floor to this bill. And um, I suggest we amend this bill and call it the Gin Gin Bill. Is that okay with you? <laughs> I'll drink to that. That's not the amendment we discussed, though. But yeah. <laughs> okay. Are you being funny, or did you have an amendment? No, no, I, don't no have I was a joke. Uh, uh, just, is there concern that um, <clears throat> is there concern that the amounts are? Too Well, in, in 1996, I was going to be a, an Olympic high hurdler. Said the, I was hitting a head-on collision by a gentleman drinking and driving. Said the, just a joke about the Olympic high hurdler. But I was hitting a head-on collision. Said I have a big aversion to people drinking and driving. Said with this amount, said uh, I don't think there's such a small percentage of the population that could ever drink that and, and be construed as being under the influence. And for me, that's very important. Said the. Uh, uh, when we look, you know, it is really meant to be a tasting. Not, it's not a bar. It's not a place to go drink. But if you're truly interested in the product, and they're only going to have four different samples open, so if you're looking at four wine bottles or four beers or four uh, distilled spirits, said so then it's just simply enough to know if you're going to invest the money, said the of a legal product in a legal store that we can help grow that business. And for me. I chair the Economic Development and Tourism Committee, and, and for me, that's important to help grow business in Georgia. Any other questions? All right, committee members. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Right now, the, the wineries and, and 
wine shops that don't sell spirits, you know, have will have some wine tastings. And I don't know whether or not they are under a five ounce maximum or not. Will this now put them in that five ounce maximum? Not to my knowledge. Said the uh, this is this is uh, in a retail uh, package store. And okay. That's all it att- obtains to is just a retail package store. So it doesn't affect farm wineries. At all. Doesn't affect farm wineries yeah. at all. All right. Any other questions from any of the committee members? Do we have anybody in the audience that wishes to be heard on this matter? Anybody Mr. wishes to make a statement? Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, I, I do want to uh, give my gratitude to uh, the folks that work in this industry and, and to you and, and uh, Chairman Williams and the, uh, on working with me to, to perfect this legislation. And the, uh, I think it's, it's been uh, refined, and I, I really appreciate you all working with me and the folks that are uh, directly involved in that industry. And I guess I have to <laughs> include <laughs> our good ways and means, Chairman. <laughs> Now, all right. Now you see, this is what happens when you go say something dumb, and we get questions. I'm sorry, <laughs> Mr. Rogers. Well, two things. Two things. One, I, I'd like for Chairman Harold to explain his first comment about the wisdom of the Senate. I'm still trying to get past that. But uh, every, you're saying every once in a while they do something wrong. They do. They do. And this, you know, to kind of to some of the questions here. This is a significant change in Georgia. We've not opened packages inside a package store. When I first went to work in a liquor store in college, I was taught somebody comes in the door, make eye contact, size them up, get the bottle, get the money, get them out. You don't want anybody hanging around in a liquor store. So times are changing, but this is a significant uh, change to our policy. So I think, it's, I think it's measured and I think it's well thought out. Mr. Chairman, it's the proper time. I'll be glad to make a motion. We have another question. Chairman Williams. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Senator Chairman Ginn, for uh, cooperating with us, too. And, you know, uh, Chairman Harrell did win uh, Package Store Man of the Year. He got a trophy to prove that yesterday. I'm impressed. (laughs) Can I end this before we all hug and have a mutual (laughs) admiration society? All right, do we have anyone in attendance that would like to be heard on this matter? I would like to ask it probably at some point there's been a little bit of a uh, confusion by uh, some of the folks representing uh, some of the retailers. So one day they didn't want to be added into the end of the earlier time, the next day they did. Do you think is at some point when this thing goes back, if it goes back to y'all, that uh, that might be remedied to their satisfaction so that everybody, so that everybody's happy since everybody wants to hold hands and sing Kumbaya? Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. One of the things that, that uh, our, our rules are a little bit different than the House rules. The, uh, I believe I either have to agree or disagree with what y'all do, said the uh, uh, I'm hoping that we y'all, y'all pass this out of committee and out of the, the uh, House. Said the, if it goes to conference, I'm glad to work with the industry to, to uh, just do exactly what you're talking about. Good. So you think that if we might wind up in a conference committee? There, there's always that possibility, but, but you know, I, I, one of the things that, uh, for me, I, I don't chair the, this particular committee, so I want to work with my chairman there to, to make sure we're all plugging on the same way. Very good. All right, if there's no other questions from the audience. If not, Chair will entertain a motion. Do we have a motion? Do we have a second? Do we have any further discussion, questions, comments from any of the committee members? If not, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? And the ayes have it. Thank Thank you, you, ladies and gentlemen.